thanks everyone for joining the session um in this session we are talking about like uh, how the kanban support and kanban structure works in itd right now uh, nowadays the support model is in the latest session uh, but some myths are wrong which i would like to discuss in this session my name is jaspreet singh and i'm working as a project manager in the excellent uh, the best part is a uh, couple of months back like we celebrated the excellence anniversary uh, it's a 10th year anniversary and i'm about to complete a decade uh, in the excellent by next year i'm presenting i'm uh, trying to uh, contribute in the drupal community since 2019 and it is my ninth contribution in the international events and the other ones the drupal camps and the cons Hi from Excellent. Uh, we are a remote organization and we are working throughout the globe. And we are dealing in the Drupal mostly. Drupal is our uh, speciality. And uh, throughout that, because I'm connected with the Excellent for the last nine years, and they are working from the day one as a like we have completed around ten years in order to work in the Drupal. So that is our efficiency. So in the agenda, I'm going to cover up the. Uh, support and maintenance model, how it works. Uh, support primary outlines. Is the support model beneficial for the client stakeholders? Uh, how the estimation process works in the support. And there are uptime and the downtime monitoring system is there. How we are managing in the support model. How to handle the Drupal security updates for the multiple projects in support. Right now we are handling around 13 plus projects in support. So I would like to guide you like how we are handling in the automated way. Does Kanban play a wider role in order to manage the support projects? So there is a one demonstration I would like to show you like how it is helping me in order to move ahead. Support bandwidth management, how we are managing because if you have a multiple projects, uh, then how we are managing the support bandwidth. So that is the one thing which we will discuss. Okay. When you hear the word support, what comes to your mind? So I would like to know from all of you, like how many of you think like when you heard word support, uh, it's related to the call center, it is related to the customer care support. Any of think like how many of you think like about the support? It's a customer support you are talking about, it's like a call center support or the support request you are getting from the customers and you are serving it. But to be honest, it is not true. There's a myth behind that. So I would like to explain you, like, let's suppose there are the social media, uh, uh, you are already using that, the Instagram, the WhatsApp, WhatsApp, uh, Facebook. Uh, let's suppose they have built the software and uh, once they are building it, launching into the market, they think about like, like, yes, we are done with that and they're sitting back and relaxing and earning the money, this is not a correct thing. If you want to, go in the market and you want to be consistent, you have to make sure it should be continuous development efforts should be there in the back end. Apart from that, the regular security update should be there. Then after you will be able to survive and compete with other stakeholders. Here comes to our role related to the support and the maintenance one. So kind of when we are talking about the support, uh, the, the myth is kind of if we, if we are good, like if you can talk about Continuous development and maintenance model. The short form would be the CPM. So that is the best thing which comes into our mind because it is a recurring model. Uh, let's suppose if you are working as a managed project, it would be a fixed cost, fixed timeline. That is the project. Okay, after three months or the fixed line of project, like then after the warranty period, then it comes to the support. You have to sign a contract with the clients for one year or two years, so it will be a kind of recurring monthly payments you will get. So it's a, that is the reason like it is the latest in the demand and we are working consistently in the support model. Let's talk about the continuous and the maintenance model. Um, like continuous and maintenance model, we are already providing all the services which are requested by the client. And apart from that, it comes into the role when the warranty period finishes. 
and then after we start working on the other things related to the support, how we can manage it, what are the things which we need to maintain. So this comes into a room. The first one is, it's a flexible continuous delivery because if you're working in the sprint model, then you have to stick with the timeline. You won't be able to fit the new things into the sprint model if you're the, the sprint is already executing. Then if you're working in the support model, that is a completely flexible and we work in the Kanban. Definitely you, your timeline or the release structure would be more flexible. It will help you to add more things and make you more flexible in order to deliver on time. Next is scale, scalable capabilities. If you are maintaining the support model, then make sure you have the scalable capabilities in hand, which works in a multiple way. Kind of, let's suppose if a developer is there, who should be more towards the, the context switching as well, should not worry about. Because context switching is not a case. Uh, people have a wrong myth about the context switching. They, are, they have a fear about the context switching, but the, the honest thing is, if you are working as a project manager as well, then you have to switch from one call to another call, still you are doing the context switching, right? So you have to make sure whenever you are handling the, all the capabilities, uh, do the vetting call first in before hiring the, the relevant team members, then after go ahead with the, uh, with the support model enters. The next is the service level agreements. Uh, we have a service level agreements in, uh, in our system where we give the relevant clear structure with the transparency. What is the critical thing if the site is down? If the site is facing the lot of traffic, then still the priority would be the lot of high, like kind of it's a critical thing. And there are the many other things kind of the highest, the critical, highest, medium, and the low. So this kind of, as based upon this, like we have maintained the SLAs, if there is a critical thing, then we have to resolve it within a day. Within the 24 hours, then we have to respond back and finish and uh, resolve that issue on the time. So. Whenever we are signing the contract, we are sharing these uh, SLAs with the client so that at least the clear transparency and the communication process should be maintained. Next one is uh, the multi-channel, the communication. So there are the multiple channels we have already maintained so far. One common channel would be the support channel where uh, the multiple projects can be managed in, an, in a very generic way. If you have a separate communication channel uh, kind of for the specific project, then the separate communication can be maintained. A similar thing, if you want to involve the stakeholders, try to involve in the relevant channels instead of the generic ones. So where you can have the, the generic communication. The next is support primary outline. Whenever we are signing a contact with our clients, stakeholders, then there are the many things which we need to know about their side, like how it is working, what kind of expectations that the stakeholder have, what is your expected SLA, because there could be a high chance like they are already working the SLA model, and you have to make sure that uh, your SLA should not be a conflict for them, so a generic guidelines should be provided to them. Are they comfortable with the service desk? Because right now we are in, in, our ex, in our company like we are using the Jira service desk. There are high chance like they would be able to use they are already using some other platform, so make sure the alignment should be there on the platform specific. What would be the, our primary support goals? Like, uh, because if you are signing it with the client, then there could be a case like client is expecting the continuous development as well. Make sure, keep it separate alignment on the continuous development and the support and maintenance model. Because support and maintenance model will handle the security updates cosmetic changes and other things. But in the continuous development, there would be a separate number of hours for the development, which can be handled separately with the change request. The next one is, how would you define the su success for the support? Because expectations would be different from the stakeholders, so make sure the alignment should be there upfront instead of the late. After the signing the contract, make sure it should be uh, before the development of start. Going ahead, like there are many other cases which I just shared the around five or six examples, which you can ask the question to your stakeholders, like uh, so you'll get the enough information because other questions would be like what are the risk areas which we need to take care of that while doing the sanity on the website during the deployment. So these are the relevant questions which we can propose to the client and ask the, and get the relevant 
answers from the client. Why is support model is beneficial for the stakeholders? What kind of benefits they will get once they sign the contract for the support model? The first one is worthy proactive communication because if you are very transparent setting the expectations up front, definitely a, a lot of openness will be there from the client side as well. So make sure every expectation should be lined up uh, with the alignment during the, during the first call as well, okay, instead of the middle of the development because there would be a many hidden areas which your stakeholder doesn't know. So make sure the alignment should be there up front. It's a fixed fee model. Uh, most of them most might be you are already using the support model. There are the uh, three packages or the two packages which you have already maintained so far, gold, silver, and uh, like this way you can provide the services. Like uh, kind of the, if you are choosing the gold package, this is the cost. If you are using the another package, this is a different cost. So at least client is aware about that, uh, what package he's supposed to choose, and based upon that he can proceed it accordingly automation. So we are also targeting the automation uh, because let's suppose uh, there are security updates uh, that is a once in a week and four times in a month. Then it would be very difficult for a QA in order to perform the sanity. It will take a lot of time in order to uh, perform the sanity, test it out on the staging instance, then after on the production instance. Better to execute the automation process. It will save a lot of time and try to make it automate in this way so that your security updates can be clipped together. It will save the time for you and for the client. Reduce staff management. If you're working in the managed project, then you have to allocate the relevant capacity, staffing. So kind of if a, work, a developer is working the full time, uh, then he will completely allocate it to that project. If you're working the staff model, uh, sorry, the support model, then you have to make sure developer should have the multiple projects in hand so that because the number of uh, contacted hours could be less. So make sure a developer could have the one or two projects in hand so that at least the, the, uh, you should not allocate the full-time developer for a single project where the contacted hours are less. To handle, we'll discuss the bandwidth management in the, la in the last slide. So I'll discuss more about that in the slide. The timely resolution, yeah, kind of, if you are following the SLA process, then definitely a timely resolution will be provided as per the SLA. And in order to share the transparency, uh, so make sure after every month, uh, share the report with the client on the, on the SLA report, where you'll see like, uh, you'll get the 10 number of requests or the uptime or the downtime issues, then uh, how you have followed the SLA and where you are uh, broken or where you are lacking somewhere. So at least give the relevant information to the client. So at least that it will help you to build the trust in front of the stakeholders. Burn report. So we are preparing the burn report along with the monthly report as well, where we'll get the let, uh, a complete report of the tickets. Uh, it's a support tickets or the continuous development tickets. Uh, let's suppose the estimation of the ticket is around 20 hours and you are using 25 hours, but we will charge only 20 hours to the client. So that will reflect on your burn report. So make sure to share that with the client for, the, for building the trust factors. Uh, support should be capable enough in order to handle the cosmetic changes the change request, because if there is a big request of 80 hours or 100 hours of request, then it would be difficult to maintain under the support model. So make sure that should be segregated into the continuous development model instead of the Drupal security, Drupal uh, support model. Okay, now let's talk about the estimation process, how we are handling it. So there are the various key factors which I've already written down. Let's suppose you have uh, a one ticket where uh, the security updates are there. And make sure the grooming and estimation should be there. Uh, each line item shows the separate efforts. Uh, if there is a grooming and estimation is required, then please put the effort as a, 
base hours and the high hours. You have to update the base hours only. Uh, high hours will be automatically be updated. Then after the POC, if there is a POC time required, then at the time, if not, then skip it. Wireframe is required for the by for the backend efforts or the development efforts testing or the front end efforts. Keep it segregated so that client will also uh, have the better understanding on same. After that, the PR review merge and the deployment process that effort goes to the, the technical architect, architect one and that efforts will also be included. The good thing is here you can see that the, uh, I have already added the three times uh, for the queue efforts, manual, rogation, and the sanity. You can also divide the three things into the three environments. One is development environment where queue is already validating the things, then the staging environment, and third one is the production. So make sure these efforts should be tracked somewhere so that client will get the understanding uh, because if you are not giving these kind of, uh, not following the, these standards, then at least you, uh, a QA will log the time in the separate ticket or the TA will log the time in the separate ticket. So if you have a collaborated efforts in the single ticket, you will be able to track all the efforts because let's suppose the 39 hours are already added as a high hours and you are already used utilizing under budget or over budget, so you'll get an idea from this one as well. It will help you to prepare the reports on the monthly basis. Yes, I completely agree with you. Doing the grooming and the estimate will take some time, but later on it will give you the benefit because at least you would be able to track all the things in a single ticket. There is a one column which is estimate confidence. In the row number two and row number four, I've already added the, the less estimate. Uh, the confidence level is low. Okay, so how do we are calculating the uh, the confidence level? Let's suppose there is no uncertainty to apply, so requirements are all clear. So make sure to add the efforts as a confidence level should be six. It means the, all the requirements are clear. If the confidence level is high, but still the scope of definition is not much clear, add the efforts as a five confidence level. And if the scope could be used more details, uh, need more conversation, then try to add the four. It depends upon the requirement. It may vary from the ticket to ticket as well. But the best part is, let's suppose you are adding five as a confidence level, and it should be multiplied by 1.25. If you are adding four, it will multiply by 1.5. Similar case, if you are adding three, it will be counted as multiplied by 1.75. In the last slide, you can see in the, the POC one, I have already added five. It counted as a 1.25 multiplied by four, so it counts as a five. And the row number four, I have already added four. It means multiply by 1.5, the highest hours would be 15, okay? So, but whenever you are adding or sharing the estimate with the client, make sure to add, share the estimates high level instead of the base level. Because this will be a kind of range for you. You can cover up the things till 33 hours, but this is the high range which you can share with the client. So there's a limit in between that. Manage uptime and the downtime issues in support. So how we are managing it, like uh, there is a continuous monitoring process will be there, like when the site is up or the site is down, it will give you the information on the same. How the, the uptime monitoring system we have already set up, I'll share in the next slide, but let me share you like how we are managing the support. We are offering the 24 by seven site rel reliability engineering support as well. Not the development support, it's only the, the site reliability support. Next one is uh, we have a system in place for the email, Slack, and the mobile notification. Automatically, uh, the notification will be triggered to the DevOps team members, and they will perform the work accordingly. RCA report, where let's suppose if there is a, any bug raised by the client or incident raised by the client, then we have to show, uh, share the root cause analysis report with the client. So at least they will get an idea like what was the root cause. Whether it's a regression issue, it's a sanity issue, or whether that was the existing bug which was there in the system. The password security, we are using the last pass. Uh, to maintain the security of the system. So that will help you to maintain the consistency in the system for the support model. 
The next is the support team and the DevOps team. Collaboration is required if there is uptime or the downtime issues are there. And if they need more information from our side, we already have a system in place for the run books where we are already sharing that information with the DevOps team member in case because the development team is working eight hours per day, but the Dev DevOps team is working 24 hours seven support. And during the night, development team won't be available. So in that case, w they will follow the run book and they will get all the instructions related to the server details, admin details, site details, site URLs, who is the project manager, who are the relevant team members working on it, and they will fix it on. In order to get the relevant information shared with them, they will do a kind of dry run in order to see whether all the things are working fine or not before accepting any project in the plate. We are also providing the on-demand infrastructure support. Right now, that is not a very common thing which we are offering to in the support services. But in case if client requires uh, infrastructure support, then we are offering that as well. Moving ahead, how the uptime and the downtime issues works in support. We have already set up the system called the uptime report. Okay, it will once it got the trigger like the there is some uh, activity is not happening on the website after the 59 seconds automatically it will generate a trigger okay here incoming trigger creates an obscene alert client in case uh, got the notification about this the site is down the client can also create the uh, the incident request the jira service that we are already using and they can create a request accordingly then after we have a mechanism in place where it will automatically trigger the notification to the relevant team members. The DevOps team members will get the, the Slack message, SMS on mobile, and other application. So it will alert them like the site is down. They're supposed to perform some action on same. And how, what kind of alerts we are getting when the site is down like this way? First is uptime robot will throw a notification the monitor is down. And this is a website, this is a reason, and the service is unavailable. Then Opsgenie will create a one ticket in the system automatically. We do not need to do any intervention, but the DevOps team member will do the acknowledgement. Yes, they are working on it. You can see that the alert came at 8.04, and then after the developer acknowledged at the same time, then after the uptime, if the site is down uh, up again, then it will show you the count as well like it was down for six minutes, zero seconds, and tagged to the relevant team, uh, which are related to this one. And if site is up and a DevOps team member will confirm that site is working properly, then they will close the alert accordingly. How we are handling the, the Drupal security updates uh, for the multiple projects in support? Make sure to ensure um, ensure the Slack channel is subscribed to the status for the infrastructure. Um, if you are using the Acquia hosting, if you are using the platform research or the Pantheon, if they have any support in uh, sorry uh, uh, the the if you ha there there is any infrastructure maintenance is there that is already scheduled by them, you will get a notification if you have the subscribe to that channel. So uh, that is one example. Okay, that is the one example which I mentioned as a status.acquia.com. Uh, you can also get the relevant reference for the Pantheon and uh, the platform data search as well. And whatever the hosting you are already using, you will get a subscribe notification for the maintenance. Give a alert to your clients as well, or they will uh, alert to the end users. So there should not be a surprise if the, because if client is aware about that, like yes, there was a maintenance time uh, for one hour at least, they will not create any incident. Okay, if there is any incident created by the ops genie, then the ops team will definitely defer that. The next one is, uh, if, because once in a week on Thursday, like we are getting the, the security updates, um, and uh, if you are not going to miss that, so try to subscribe the Twitter channel. Twitter feeds will definitely throw a notification on the Slack channel, and you'll get the list of security updates on the channels, and make sure to create the relevant tickets for that as well. T 
ticket will be created in the system once we have the Drupal security updates. Uh, you can make it automatic as well because if you are using any uh, any other tool like a Dependa boot, then it will automatically create a security update tickets for you, and you can maintain it accordingly on the monthly basis. Uh, we are giving the priority to the security updates because we are in the support model. And uh, if there is any cosmetic change or other things, then we have to make sure the priority will be given to the security updates. There are already pre-approved hours we have already received or approved from the client side. Whenever we are signing the contract, we are getting the eight hours as a pre-approved hours from the client. So it means whenever the site is down, whenever site is facing the downtime issues or the uptime issues, then we need, do not need to take any approval from the client. Okay, so at the time it will save your time as well because you can directly jump into the solution instead of asking an approval from the client. Eight hours are the pre approved hours. Like in case if you need more hours for the R&D, then definitely seek an approval from the client. But still, I believe the eight hours would be suffice in order to trigger a notification to the client if uh, we are working on it or if there is any resolution provided by us or if there, is, there would be more uh, time required for that thing. A critical feature checklist uh, must be maintained. We already have a, uh, the risk areas if you are already maintaining that as a list. So make sure whenever we have a security updates executed or fixed by the developer or raised by the development team, make sure uh, the QA team supposed to validate those critical feature areas so that all the risk areas are already validated by the QA team, and then after we can plan the deployments accordingly. How Kanban plays a vital role to manage the support projects? So first one is uh, multiple projects can be set up in the Kanban board. I'll showcase you how it is working. Second is filters will be maintained by the Jira filter query. Single view of interface if you have 13 projects or the 14 more than 14 projects as well, you can also maintain a single interface for all the projects. The best part is if you are working on the managed project and uh, you have a DSM, if you are trying to wrap up the DSM in the 50 minutes or the 20 minutes or 30 minutes maximum, but still we are working in the support model and we are handling 13 different projects. Still, we are able to wrap up the DSM, the daily stand-up meeting in 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes. If the process is streamlined, then after you'll be able to manage it. The retrospective meeting we are having once in a month uh, for the team and uh, for the various projects as well. At least if the team members have the relevant feedback for the project, then they can add your feedbacks in the retrospective and the relevant PMs can answer it accordingly. All the PMs and all the team members can join uh, the single retrospective call. The prioritized streamline, if the in the Jira board, the Kanban board, if the, the streamline is prioritized as a high, medium, and low, it will give a, a visibility to the users in order to answer it or the pick up the tickets accordingly. If the priority is low, then definitely the user understand that like, um, yes, it would be the lowest priority and we can pick up later as well. But the point is, if there is a highest priority, at least it should reflect on the board so developer can pick up the things accordingly. Preferred common workflow. It should not be the case like one project is using the sprint model and the rest of 12 projects are using the Kanban model. Make sure to go with the common workflow. So exceptionals are accepted, acceptable, then definitely. But make sure the common workflow can be preferred uh, in the support model. Right now we are using the Kanban for almost all the projects. Kanban speciality, like kind of if you are working in the Kanban, then make sure the work in progress limit should be set. Uh, if you have the number of projects, make sure the work in progress limit should be set based upon that only. So this is a Kanban board, how it is working. So let me give you the demonstration how it is working for me. So here you can see that uh, I've set up a Kanban board for the six projects. This is one example. So if you are going to select a one project, project number one, so it will show you the priority of the, or the it, you can see that the swim lane is highest and the, the test project in test project one ticket is there. 
and if you want to go with another so it will show you the medium priority and the test so like this way we are handling the dsm and uh, it is very streamlined and we are managing in the 15 to 20 minutes in order to cover up all the projects bandwidth management so if you're working support then make sure at least the accountable and the responsible or I would say the primary and the secondary structure should be maintained. Here you can see the one example where the back end is the person A and uh, uh, the person B is the kind of the, the responsible person, but the person A is the accountable person. Accountable means uh, he's the client facing person like who is handling that project on the primary basis. And the person B already have the, uh, the local setup available in the system. And uh, at least the information is there with him um, and person A is on leave for 10 days or 20 days, then person B would be able to cover up the things. Um, if you don't have this structure maintained, you won't be able to handle the Drupal security updates or the SLA on time. So that structure should be maintained on time so at least you can manage the things accordingly. And uh, you can see that the person B who is uh, secondary in the project one, but in the project two, he's already a primary person and the person is the, the responsible person. You have to do the vice versa for all the, all the rules, kind of the QA and the PM. Like this way, I'm, I'm here, but in my absence, another PM is already working in my projects. So at least the knowledge sharing is already there with him. So that is the reason like he's all able to manage all the projects in my absence. That is a one relevant example. Rotation policy. Um, it ensures that the content is learning with the support portfolio. Team members can experience the, the s like if they are feeling like the monotonous work is there, they are working with the support for the last couple of years, still uh, they have an opportunity in order to go with the rotation policy. Um, make sure don't go with the rotation policy wi without any duration. If you have the duration set for the two months, then make sure to give a clear information to the team members as well. Like uh, we need two months in order to do the rotation from the support to manage project or the support to staffing project. And uh, it is their interest if you have to ask, because right now we are asking on the quarterly basis, asking the, uh, the f via form, the Google form, if you are interested to go outside the support or you are good to continue, you are interested to uh, get more opportunity here in the support portfolio. If they are saying yes, then we are good. So I would like to share uh, the data. Uh, th in the last three years, we got only the one rotation request so far. Okay, it means we have the good opportunities in the support model because, because we are working the new things. Instead of uh, only the monotonous work of the Drupal security updates or the minor cosmetic changes, we have a lot of things uh, under the support model, which is a continuous development as well. Make sure only segregate into the two parts. One is a continuous development and then after the support. You can use the components or the labels in order to make it segregate and you can share the reports uh, with the client accordingly. Okay, so it's a conclusion. Uh, what we have discussed about the understanding the support and maintenance model. So we can call it as the CPM as well, continuous development and maintenance model as well. Uh, initial questionnaire, make sure it should be well prepared because if you are getting a website in the support, make sure you ask the relevant question to the team, uh, to the stakeholder in order to get the relevant information. Share the b uh, benefits, uh, like what kind of benefits the stakeholder will receive. So we have already discussed that. Project estimation process, we are using the template. So uh, it's supposed to be followed rigorously in order to get the relevant information at the end of the month, every month, and share the report with the client. Uptime, downtime management system, that should mean place. Security updates management process. How Kanban is working the multiple support projects, how he's capable to enough in order to handle the multiple projects at the same time. And the bandwidth management as well. Rotation policy, that comes into the picture. If uh, the management is comfortable, then definitely go ahead with that. Because definitely if you are hiring a support team, 
then it should be there for long term instead of for the short term because you have already planned a lot of things. The primary architecture, primary secondary architecture is there. So make sure it should be well planned accordingly. Thank you so much. Um, these are my the social media handlers and you can reach out to me directly there as well. So if uh, we don't have any questions on the app, as far as I can see, so are there any questions from the audience? Okay, I'm coming to you now. Thanks, thanks a lot for the talk. Um, just a quick question. When you say um, application security, application updates, do you only update the packages which need to be updated or do you update the whole code base? So there are the two things which we are using. One is the module security update or the core security updates. Both comes under that and the estimation would be different for both things. So make sure if you are handling the either the core module or the contrib module security updates are there or the core version security update is there. So make sure to give the relevant information to the client and we and the answer is yes, we are handling both at the same time. Sorry? Oh, okay. Yeah, we prefer to update the entire code base more regularly instead of having big chunks. Okay. Yes, if, if the architecture is maintained, then, then after you'll be able to handle more consistently. Yeah. Okay. If you want to save some time yeah. and uh, the information is already given to the stakeholders, like right. you can club the security updates as well for the bi-weekly or the monthly basis. Right. At least you can get the three or four security updates in a one batch and you can trigger it. The best part is you can save the QA efforts, you can save the TA efforts, backend efforts will be saved, deployment efforts will be saved as well. But at least the communication should be there in the transparent way right. with the stakeholders. Yeah. But you still process the updates manually, right? Yes. But, uh, there is an automation system as well, which is right now we are using the Dependa boot. Right, we use Godaro. Okay. Yeah. So kind of at least it will give you the module security updates. Yeah. Uh, uh, in system and uh, we have a system in place where it will automatically create the Jira tickets right. and we can manage it accordingly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, if you do full service support, do you have kind of buckets of hours for design, for front end, for back end, for security updates, or do you just take it all out of one pot? Um, when we are talking about the uh, the packages, uh, we are not talking about the specific services for the back end or the front end. It's a complete full services for the support model. Kind of uh, in the support model, you will be able to handle the only the security updates. It means when you're talking about the security updates, the back-end person or the front-end person both can uh, take the participation on that. So that is the reason in the estimation, we have already covered up the, all the items where the back-end efforts are front-end efforts. So we do not need to place the separate efforts for the under the packages. You can provide the services as a whole support portfolio instead of the separate front-end, back-end or the queue efforts. You mentioned that um, it's important to have a replacement. So as you're here, you already have a, a replacement back home. <coughs> and uh, what are your best practices or uh, tools for, for onboarding? So all, all the times, all the two PMs in picture with the project, or do you have anything else? Thanks for the question. It's a very nice one. <laughs> I was expecting the same question. Uh, to be honest, we have an onboarding checklist in maintained, okay, for the two things. One, let's suppose you are onboarding a new project. If you are onboarding a new team member, if you are offboarding a team, new team members, we already have a checklist in place, okay? I'll share the that checklist with you and uh, it is really helping me, uh, to be honest. Because let's suppose you are onboarding a new team member, share that checklist with that person and that person will just follow that checklist. You do not need to sit with that person in order to share the information of that product. We are trying to make the manual efforts very minimal because the, the product knowledge, we are already uh, tracking in, a, in a videos, 
okay uh, if you are sharing the knowledge via videos or if one person is sharing the knowledge to another person then we are recording it and keeping it safe with us so that once a new person joins in then we can share that information or share the videos with that person that will save your time because onboarding efforts you have a checklist in place you just need to share that link offboarding you already have that uh, the if you have the product knowledge is already in track the product document instead of the admin manual or the manual documentation if you can track in the videos that is more effective to be honest and you can cover up the product knowledge if, let's suppose if you are sharing the knowledge with that person manually then it will take around one week or more than that as well for the new product or the new project but if you have the recordings in place person would be able to wrap up in a one day or two uh, we can discuss more um, uh, in the separate session as well in offline sure thank you so much any other questions going once going twice okay so okay thank you so much <laughs> <laughs>